What is up, Myth Guardians? I am back again, finally, after the balance patch, which I am so stoked about. I hope you guys are too, because it just shook things up and things are getting uh, pretty crazy out there on ladder. And uh, we're going to be showing you guys today's one of those crazy decks. Um, and this is a deck that actually uh, I've been interested in since alpha and that I kept trying to build with every patch and every new season. Um, there was a featured deck back in alpha called Darling's Witching Hour. And unfortunately, Darling doesn't play anymore, uh, but their deck has lived on. And it was a blue-green spell-based control deck um, that wins with Zira, uh, OTK, or just pushing uh, ping damage with Mothmara or Smite. Um, but the reason this deck is so good right now, and you've probably played against quite a few blue uh, spell-focused control decks, is because of the change to Locked in Ice. Um, this card became so much better when they added the mirror tag to it and locking its strength to zero is just insane. Um, and then comboing that with Maelstrom, it's just instant removal, right? And you get to lock up almost the entire board and threaten that combo on anything that comes down pretty much. Um, but let's, let's go ahead and look at what we're running here. We're running 15 minions, which isn't many. Um, but hopefully we won't be just throwing our 15 bodies at them and hoping to win. Um, the game plan is to really, uh, you know, use our minions strategically because we have so few of them, right? Um, so these are the, the guardian is going to be one of the minions that we can just throw and because it's such a big body and a defender, and this is going to kind of buy us time until our combo pieces are online. And the next minion, as far as blue goes, is Magnus. Uh, just having that 3-3 uh, three, three body, unfortunately it was nerfed, but having a body attached to the deal two to all enemy minions is really good in this deck um, and represents little damage and threat on its own. Um, as far as our green minion goes, our green minions are Mothmaras. We're going to be using these as finishers mainly. Uh, in certain slower matchups, we can play them a little earlier uh, to kind of threaten and push damage. Uh, but mainly we're going to be using them as kind of our finishers. Uh, it really depends on the situation. And then another really good body is our Academy Analyst. And this card also received a buff with the patch and it allows your uh, spells to cost one less uh, on top of the div four now which is really good for finding whatever we need um, but also it's a one four body makes it awesome um, and of course we're going to be playing bella in our spell desk in our spell deck um, and the other minions are automagic artillery one of our wing conditions sable wing zero and short stag. Uh, Recursionist is just going to be copying whatever spells we play, um, which is really awesome with the mirror effect. All right, let's go ahead and go through the spell package. We're going to be running two Brainstorm, which is great. Forked Lightning, which got a buff and got the mirror effect. And this actually pairs really well with our Maelstrom uh, because we kind of, you know, force our opponent into a certain types of board states that force them into bunching up and you'll see that in the games um two thunderclaps three locked in ice remember this card has mirror so we're going to be casting way more than six of them um in, in a really long game we have recursionist uh to copy it so we don't need to run all four copies and we're running one horn to kind of close out games um one and heli uh, just in case we need to shuffle something that we don't have an answer for. Um, and also shuffling our own sp our own minions is really good with this. So if they uh, end up casting Misanthropia, um, we can just shuffle our Zira back in or something. 
uh, we're going to be using auto cams, right, to combo with our spells and, you know, just increase our draw overall. Two detained, four raid the tombs, give me all that draw, baby. And one led astray, which is just straight value. I had two in here, but I had to cut one, even though I'd really like two. We're already at 41 cards, and I don't know what else I could cut, honestly. Um, and we're going to be running Bald Mountain which is going to allow us to cast Murmur again and all our other, get back any of our control spells, whatever we need, right? Uh, and that is it. Let's go ahead and hop into a game. We're also going to be running Turn of Seasons for the extra draw, uh, the little bit of heal it gives, and then Smite, because we're not healing too much but we're not going to be taking an insane amount of damage because we're controlling. Uh, we will take some damage, and that's why we're, we're mainly going to be getting two damage smite. All right, our first match, we are going second. We have the turn one auto cam, and we have the free tree of life. Uh, so we're playing against Puffin here on red, green, rainbow. Uh, this deck... I don't think this is a meta deck. Uh, this is definitely not a meta deck, um, but it is quite scary, especially with all these agile uh, enchantments. We go ahead and get our we go ahead and get our auto cam down, and we have our turn two guardian. We're in a great spot. They have a forged handler already. Um, luckily, they didn't hit another and couldn't start chaining them, but they did draw Volkov Veteran. Volkov Heavy, I'm sorry. We are in a pretty good spot. Go ahead and trade that. Detain that one. We want to keep our auto cam healthy and start activating some draw off of that. We're in a pretty good spot. So they don't want to contest that Guardian. They're like, I'm over that plane over there and just go ahead and play the Gamayune. And that's an easy let astray and draw off of Autocam. And whatever they play next, I can Magnus turn five. I could even Thunderclap if I want to. Covering fire. And here comes the, ooh, and what a top deck. I get, the, I get the locked in ice. So I can take two more damage on my Autocam. Either way, I've already activated it. It's done a good job on its own. And the Locked in Ice takes care of that heavy. <laughs> so they don't even want to contest this anymore. They know I have a Locked in Ice in hand. And if they play right there, they're just going to lose whatever they end up playing. So I go ahead and double forked Lightning. Easy wipe the board. We're controlling them nicely. They're pretty much out of gas. They only have enchantments and spells. But they do have seven ring ritual already. And luckily I saved my Magnus. I knew it was going to come sooner or later. When you're playing against red, you kind of know it. And you want to have an answer. So there goes the Magnus. And we just start smiting and swinging. This is looking really good for us. Um, I didn't see their hand before, but... Now that I see it, you know, I can see why I won. I just like controlled everything they had, shuffled a gamma unit earlier too, you know, and that's, that's pretty much it. You know, they can't do much. Just drawing, activating auto cam. I have everything I need. Go ahead and detain that so they can't heal. And then I have my deported ready. I have two deported's in hand, another detained, two locked in ice. You know, I'm copying spells with recursionists. Approaching so they end up killing my auto cam here with the rush Sky Ranger. This is a card that I actually want to play in my deck as a great finisher. Um, I just, I don't know what to, what to cut. So if you have any ideas of what to cut, let me know. I have lethal anyways, they didn't have to concede. Um, but I guess they saved us both some time. Next, we're going to be playing up an OB list. 
and we have a pretty good starting hand unfortunately we don't have any of our forked lightnings any of our uh control spells so i'm just gonna try and you know force them to play into me um yeah there's not much we can do so we at least we have mo a lot of our minions in hand and there we go we drew into a fork lightning that's great go ahead and play the ravine guardian here um and moth has lurker so we're fine and this thing gets defender so if they want to swing into that fine by me and they end up playing storm seer which is kind of scary for me um my Mothmars are one health, so I can't really contest this. If I play a Moth here, uh, it's just going to die. So I'm going to just let this happen um, for now. They go ahead and play a cheap and early Plateau, turn four, which is pretty great. Go ahead and burn zero. I don't need that uh, um, right now at least. And then we're going to oh. just recursionist early on and then get another detained so whatever they start playing here we can just like fork lightning and then bounce whatever the big minion is unfortunately it was a mardi core and has the awaken damage so we lose our recursionist really hoping that wouldn't happen but oh well go ahead and clap here uh trade our mardi core and then yeah, I'm not going to play either of these Mothmaras. I'm just going to wait. Uh, I don't want to play into Clap or, you know, Magnus. So, plus I want to use these as ping damage. I end up having to play over here. And I already have them on, you know, 12 HP. So, I want to just hold the block here and play my Mothmaras. Unfortunately, they start doing some insane damage with the stairway play under the uh, the uh, Sand Guardian. Um, but I guess I missed damage here. I should have played my Mothmara first. Um, but yeah, I think this is lethal. So I go ahead and play my Mothmara. Uh, deport that. Alright, we're two off of lethal. I, I would have been one off of lethal. So it's fine. Either way, they can't kill all three Mothmaras. No Clap, no Magnus. And I can't believe that instead of playing a controlling game, I just ended up racing them with Mothmara spells um, and did a little bit of control. But that's why I really like this Mothmara version over the other ones you might have seen on ladder. All right, so we are playing against a YP list and looking at the opponent's hand, this is definitely not the YP aggro list, even though they're playing Jade Puma. Um, it's, uh, you know, we have a pretty slow hand, so we're just going to, you know, burn, smite, draw. They're not playing anything. We have nothing worth controlling. Um, down comes the Tree of Life, finally and a puma so i think i'm gonna get rid of that i think that's what i ended up doing yeah uh i can save my lettuce tray for something else and just you know keep another forked lightning in hand kind of gives it away but oh well Load up. we got decent value they're really not playing much here i have two analysts i don't really need both but I'm going to get an early recursionist down. And I know they're going to be buffing uh, a unit since they're playing loadout armory. So I really value my detained deported here. So whatever they throw a bunch of buffs on, I can just deport. They're also playing smite, which is interesting. All right, we finally got an auto cam. Let's start drawing and getting some value off of that. All right, so we're in a pretty good spot. They did not kill my recursionist. Um, but yeah, look, they have a racer now, so I think they're going to go ahead and do that. Yep. Saw that one coming. I was expecting it a lot sooner. All right, so we're in a pretty good spot. We can just, yeah, kill that off since they didn't buff it. Analyst 
and let's see what we, okay i didn't activate analyst there um or did i i'm sorry i i wasn't checking that um they end up using zimic so now i'm actually kind of scared they have a full hand uh and now we activate it and go ahead and use our raid one mana raid with two gems which is awesome and so now we can just go ahead and draw some more sure we want to get all the draw go ahead and burn our ravine guardian and smite and mothmara all right our opponent is doing some crazy things looking like they're gonna combo us since we can see their hand and yeah good thing i left my let astray I kept my light astray so we can use that on Zolea right now and I'm gonna go ahead and kill that Jade Puma as well and that's a two mana fork lightning which is awesome and we go ahead and draw we're in a great spot here go ahead and draw some more sure why not we have five energy on our Academy in our list right now We've got them at a lower, uh, okay, here it comes. So they racer and they armature. Man, I was really hoping that they would, you know, use the blade here, but they ended up volitioning and just hitting me in the face for 12, which was insane. Um, and that hurt bad. I was thinking about killing it, but I was like, no, nah, I think I got to race them here. So I just go ahead and steal that. And because it has rush, you know, I get that rush. We're very close to lethaling them. Um, but unfortunately, you know, they have an agile unit in hand and they just do the same thing they just did the turn before. And they have perfect lethal. Uh, yeah, they just had uh, the perfect combo pieces and there wasn't much I could do. We don't really run any healing and they just, you know, comboed me from hand, which was really well played by them. All right, so we're against uh, red purple here. Uh, they have a really good mid range list and this is going to be a pretty hard matchup for us because they have so much rush. So they're going to be getting value. Uh, instant value right so normally we we're kind of favored against other things that don't have rush because they're not even going to be able to damage us and we can just remove it in response uh, but rush is going to get a little bit of value before we can remove it Watch me fly. so we have we drew into a fork lightning which is just awesome gonna go Maybe ahead and get an analyst down um, I think maybe I should have played that across from the trapezist. Maybe that was a mistake. Either way, the Tengu comes down and I don't have to kill that right away because uh, it'll go back to hand. I think I'm just going to let it live. Yeah, and Maelstrom the other side. Make make uh, them play in front of our uh, our two minions over here. So they make the trade. They don't get it back to hand, which is nice. Um, and then, unfortunately, a Thriving Shade comes down. Um, yeah, I try and fork Lightning. Unfortunately, I didn't think that that was uh, a Shade. And I, I can just, you know, kill it with five mana because I have Analyst. Uh, Serapis comes down. We're pretty low on cards. I think we're just gonna raid the tombs here and let the Serapis go face for a turn. Yeah, so we can auto cam, uh, div, and then raid. All right, so sweet, we drew two Let Astrays. This is when I was actually still running two, by the way. Uh, and yeah. yeah, we're just gonna smite and go face. So luckily we do have the Let Astray, so we can answer that. And then, unfortunately, they kill our auto cam. They had just have the perfect answer with Coxinga. 
Um, I'm going to go ahead and brainstorm and I think let us stray. And I'm just going to end up losing this here. Uh, unfortunately, I'm, pl I'm not removing their entire board. So it gives them a chance to, you know, play the stairway. Vengeance is mine. And yeah, they start stacking Born and Cruelties in hand, which is really good when we're in winter because that's just a straight removal spell. Uh, unfortunately, I end up having to make this play. Um, and I guess I should have waited till winter. And they, they use the uh, enchantment moving ability on Coxing. So now they have two frenzied units and I'm just getting destroyed. Um, yeah, I think I, I make a huge misplay here. I thought like I, I should have just forked lightning again, right? But I don't know why I was thinking Stairway to Hades gives ephemeral and I just bounce it back to, and I misread the patch notes, right? So it lost the frenzy, but it didn't get, like, it doesn't get ephemeral. <laughs> so uh, I now I have to block this 5-5 five five that I could have just killed last turn. So I think this one is gonna be a loss, but I definitely had it in the bag. Like you can see they're pretty much out of gas and we're still drawing cards like crazy. And we have an out another auto cam up. Uh, but yeah, that's that's gonna be game right there. Uh I just yeah I left another thread on the board and that was a huge misplay. So there's just not much I can do at this point. Battery up. Check fire. Yeah, so they they Check have uh they have Machia in hand so they can make some a cool play and just Machia this away. Yeah, attack and Machia. <laughs> and I get dabbed Leaving on, of on course. So, they have lethal anyways and they go ahead and Leaving play out the, the rest of their racers to show me that they were going to have it no matter what. They didn't have to do any of those plays. They could have just played two racers, but yeah, that, that was a misplay by me, and I think we definitely could have won that one uh, if I remembered what the card did. <laughs> All right, our last match here is against Orange-Purple. We have a decent starting hand. Whenever you see Fort Lightning in your hand, you know, you just got to be happy to see it uh, when you see Orange or any of these, like, aggro-ish colors uh, that are going to be playing tokens out, so... We go ahead and just might play our Mothmara. I'm surprised that they didn't make the trade here, but then all of a sudden the Axeman comes down. I totally understood why they weren't going to waste a racer <laughs> because they had an awaken effect to kill it. That new buffed Axeman is awesome, by the way. Uh, go ahead and play my Maelstrom. I killed the racer over here, and this is really good. So I have forked what? lightning hand, as I said in the deck building part. Hey there. Uh, by playing the maelstrom on one side of the board, we kind of forced them Leave to bunch here. The Instant track. forked lightning value activated. So I think I'm going to play my Mothmara here. Um, they're going to be less likely to try and contest it with the maelstrom there. And then, yeah, forked lightning. We need to kind of, you know, put a what? little pressure on them get the pressure off of us uh yeah they go ahead and play uh the jaza and we've got the lettuce tray ready for them so go ahead and do that and then we can smite or play our guardian i think playing our guardian is a little better when we're on 11 hp uh they can infuse and kill this hey, now which is you know fine uh and they decide not to and not even play their trickster. So I'm going to go ahead and just lock in ice, right? And that instantly dies. So I don't have to take that three damage and wait till next turn for it to die. Uh, they infuse this time so they can just kill it with the awaken. And that's fine by me. They're pretty much out of gas. And I just locked in ice again. I can't burn here. I've burnt these two. And this is ephemeral. Your premiums. 
and is unburnable. But it's okay, I draw right into another forked lightning. So this one's under control. And yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and burn horn. Don't need that right now. We just want to keep controlling. And we're in a really good spot. We have double forked lightning in hand. Hey, pay up. And they just keep trying to push a little more damage. They're gonna get a draw off broker here. There's nothing I can really do about it. Um, so that's fine, I guess. And we can just go ahead and play our, our Magnus and set up another blocker and threat. Like they're already on 18 health, so I'm, I'm in a good spot, right? Or so I think. <laughs> Move along. They're pushing Move along. damage with their insurance broker on the side. Uh, unfortunately, we're not going to... Uh, yeah, I go ahead and shuffle that. Just get out of my face. Fork lightning here. We end up... We can't really swing. We're just going to let Maelstrom finish this one off. And all of a sudden, we smite and they're on 16. Hey. So hey, it's yeah. a good thing they're on Journey of Souls here. They just keep getting minions back. Getting lots of value. But... We're just gonna, you know, we we have all the gas, and play Academy Analyst. You know, get that reduced cost. It di didn't really matter that turn, honestly. I just wanted to div. Um, they end up using Seal here, and that's kind of sad. So I think I just, yeah, I, I top deck Recursionist and detained off a of fall, and so. I can copy a detained and now we're really in that aggro position, right? So we can smite and really start pushing damage since we've controlled them so much. Uh, they dark passenger their shadow of our beast to get uh, a recursionist off the field. And I really don't want them. They just played their last card. So I really don't want them to draw off of the shadow of our beast. Oh, I guess they, yeah, they will draw either way. But I don't want to trade for it. Uh, I value my Div 4 in this late game situation. I didn't think they had a way to kill me. So I didn't bother blocking this. And, you know, I threaten lethal right now. So Smite and Artillery is lethal. Either way, I had Horn too. Uh, just all kinds of ways to have lethal here. And showing my opponent that... No matter what they did, I was in a position to win. And that's it. I hope you guys really enjoyed uh, watching this video and uh, give this deck a shot because it is one of my all times favorites, uh, as I said, since Alpha. Um, and I will be posting the deck list in the description. Uh, let me know how it goes. Take care.